Hi, I'm Merlin Glenn and I'm a product manager here at VMware. And in this Lightboard session, we're going to be talking about PKS and NSXT. We're not going to do a, a real technical deep dive. We're going to kind of get mid-level and describe what actually happens with NSXT uh, in the way that PKS implements Kubernetes clusters. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at a little bit of, of some core routing topology. Um, so in your environment, you're probably going to have some core routing that already exists. And when we talk about deploying NSXT with PKS, um, we're going to create something, an NSXT construct that is also a router. It's a very, very equivalent capability, and we call it a T0 router. Uh, and this is, this is very much an NSXT construct. And it links with your existing routing um, via a routing protocol or static routing, but you know, BGP is probably the more efficient way to, to have some dynamic routing between those two, two objects. So this is going to allow us to be able to ingress and egress from all of the various Kubernetes clusters that we're going to be deploying with PKS. We're going to drill into like a single cluster, but bear in mind as we talk about this that we can have multiple clusters all coming through this T0 embankment. Now the way this T0 is implemented, um, you know, we're going to be talking about a couple of, of uh, NSXT constructs. So uh, one of those we just mentioned is the T0. Um, we're also going to be talking about a T1, which is very similar, which is a secondary tier router. Uh, and we're also going to be talking about load balancers. Now, the way those are all implemented is we have something called an edge cluster. And an edge cluster in NSXT is a collection of, say, one to eight um, VMs are physical machines that have had the edge software deployed on it. So this edge cluster um, hosts all these virtual instances of multiple T0s, T1s, and load balancers. And it's implemented by either one to eight VMs our bare metal hosts. So this is where our T0 is coming from. It's coming from this cluster here, and we've got it linked appropriately via our interfaces. And it's performing our routing to our core routing. So now we come to our developer. Um, our developer is going to be using PKS. I mean, that's who, that's who we built PKS for. So we've got our developer persona out here. And uh, the first thing that our developer is going to want to do is going to want to request a cluster. So we're going to actually issue a PKS through the PKS CLI, a PKS create cluster. So what happens whenever we do a PKS create cluster? OK, so let's, let's draw a rather large representation of our Kubernetes cluster. And we'll just call this my K8s for Kubernetes. So when that cluster is created, uh, one of the first things that gets done is we get a logical switch that gets created by PKS, which is a NSXT construct, logical switch. So we just use LS for that. And this is going to be for our cluster nodes. And in this cluster, we'll have three nodes, just to keep it simple. We'll have a master node, and we'll have two worker nodes in this cluster. And they're all going to be connected to this logical switch. That logical switch. Again, an NSXT construct is its own subnet routing with this logical switch. will also have its own T1 router associated with it. And that T1 will actually link via a dynamic routing protocol to our T0. So this is how we get access into our master node through our, through our T1, T0 infrastructure. And we can do all things like NAT services, SNAT and DNAT and, and load balancing from here. And we're going to talk a little more about load balancing in a minute. So, in addition to this logical switch, we're going to have two other key logical switches that are going to be created whenever, whenever our cluster create command took place. We're going to have another logical switch that's going to be created for a namespace, and we'll just use ns for the namespace. And that namespace, a special, uh, special namespace, is called PKS Infra. And that namespace is going to host a very special pod for us. And this pod is going to be running something called the NCP. And the NCP has a kind of cool job. Um, as we talk about you know, the other things that our developers are going to be doing with Kubernetes, the NCP is going to be talking with a very uh, a special part of Kubernetes called etcd. It's going to be running on our master node. And etcd is sort of like a little database 
for all of the actions and, and objects that should be running inside of our Kubernetes cluster. And what NCP is actually going to be doing is tapping down here into that etcd database and finding out all the objects that are being created for us, all the other namespaces and pods and load balancing rules and, and security policy rules that are being requested. And, and it's going to take an action. It's going to, and, and I'm going to go ahead and you know, draw our NSX management interface out here. You know, it literally, it'd literally be going through our routing, but it's kind of easier for our diagram to draw it out here. Um, our NCP is going to take actions. Once it finds something created inside of our etcd cluster, or inside of etcd, you know, that represents something created in our Kubernetes cluster, it's going to go out to NSXT and it's going to create all these other objects that we're going to talk about. So it's really kind of performing this nice role of just uh, almost being like a traffic cop and, and watching what's happening inside of our Kubernetes cluster and making sure that NSX is, is reactive to that and creating the, the correct objects that match what we've defined in our Kubernetes, um, in our Kubernetes constructs. So the other logical switch that gets created, and, and there's actually more than these, but these are some of the key ones. Uh, the other logical switch that gets created is every cluster that gets created in PKS gets a load balancer. And so a logical switch also gets created for that load balancer. And I should point out that each one of these logical switches that's created is, is actually consuming a slash 24 subnet from a rather large block that we have to support multiple Kubernetes clusters. So on this load balancing uh, logical switch, you guessed it, we're also going to have a load balancer, an NSX load balancer, which is a lot, remember, sort of like a logical construct that's being, that's being serviced by our edge cluster out here. And so both, both the, the load balancing logical switch and the PKS infra logical switch have their own T1 routers. And these T1 routers are also linked to our T0 so that we can route amongst the logical switches in our cluster, route to other T1s and other logical switches and other clusters if we so deem that we want to allow it, and also route ingress and egress to the rest of our infrastructure. Now, if we go back to, so these are all the things that, that are some of the things that happen whenever we create a cluster and, and some of the interaction with NSXT. So if we go back to our developer, uh, now, instead of using the PKS CLI, let's say he or she is using the kubectl CLI. And one of the first things we want to do is we want to create a namespace. So what happens whenever we create a namespace, remember, we've got NCP sort of watching what's happening here through our connection with etcd and, and making sure that we create the relevant constructs in NSXT, um, is we'll get, a, we'll get another logical switch whenever we create our namespace. So we'll make this logical switch and we'll put it namespace equals A. This is namespace A that's been created for us. And again, it gets a slash 24, so we can host 250 pods on it. And the pods, that, you know, we might have two pods running here. So that's going to be our, our other action that our developer's taken. Not only is he creating a namespace, but he or she is also creating pods via deployment or replica controller, whatever mechanism. So these pods get attached to this other namespace. As these are all being dynamic, you know, the logical switches and the interfaces to connect to these pods are all being dynamically created for us via the NCP triggering actions here and some other agents running on, SADA, running on each of the workers. So not only do we get these logical switches, but we also get another T1 connected to the logical switch and dynamically routing here. And so, you know, as it lays out, if we decided we we're going to create another namespace, this, this task repeats, repeats on and on. So we have another T1 with another logical switch for namespace B. And it's running a slash 24 as well. And we've got some pods on there. So, what are some of the other things that our, that our developer is going to want to do with the Kubernetes cluster to, to run applications, right? It's not just to do this for fun. We're trying to run applications in production. So one of the key things that we need is uh, security, right? And we, need, we also need uh, access. So we need to expose a service. And we can expose that via ingress or load balancer. And what happens when we expose a service? So 
we might have these two pods running as a service. These two pods um, are an applic a unique application that we want to we want to expose as a single unit inside of the cluster, and we call that a service. Uh, but we want to expose that service externally. So what happens is whenever we use the kubectl API to expose a service uh, externally, is we'll actually have NSXT map an external, and I'm just using the term VIP, an external IP or virtual IP that's routable out here in our external segment, uh, but that literally runs an ingress into our load balancer object for our cluster. And then our load balancer object, you know, through this T1 routing mechanism, because we can route from logical switch to logical switch, will actually be able to communicate directly to the back end pods that are tagged when we created our Kubernetes cluster. So this is a pretty powerful thing because we can, in a declarative way, whenever we're interacting with the Kubernetes API, kind of declare, you know, how do I want to expose my application, you know, ingress and egress to the external world? Uh, and then how do I want to dynamically assign all these backend pool memberships just by tagging pods? It's, it's really simplistic. We don't have to know anything about interfaces or IP addresses, and it's really powerful. Now, in addition to, to wanting to expose the service, the other key thing that, that our our developer might do through our kubectl and Kubernetes APIs, we might want to define policy. You know, security policy on this application. Uh, and, and what we could do with that is, let's say we wanted to implement a policy that denied access between these two logical switches. We could, we could actually write a bit of YAML that we feed into our Kubernetes API that says, hey, um, I want to deny based on pod membership from this namespace to this namespace and implement a distributed firewall dynamically in our NSXT infrastructure that prevents that. We could tag on namespaces, we could tag on pods, we can tag on IP blocks so we can even control ingress and egress patterns inside and outside of the cluster. So it's a really powerful mechanism that we can be declarative in the way that we do our security uh, and, and implement some pretty powerful container aware security constructs. So this is high level uh, of what NSXT does with, with Kubernetes and with PKS and how it's implemented so that we can achieve Kubernetes at scale in production with dynamic security. Thanks.